Hey. So it dawned on me a moment ago that I'm the guy standing between you and your lunch. So what I'm going to do, we'll make sure we'll wrap this up in 20 minutes or less. I already have the timer going on over here, but we'll get through this together. All right. So before I get into any of our uh, topic of conversation today, a few questions to uh, just go over who's actually here. So first of all, who's a Looker customer today? All right. Fantastic. Who's considering Looker as their BI tool? Almost all customers. OK, so you know what's going on. Fantastic. How many of you are, let's see, like dashboard consumers? You don't go into the Explore section. You just look at data. All right, so <laughs> how about folks that get into the Explore section, power users and analysts? Fantastic. How about people who do that or you know, are developers? All right, high technical savvy. And who are administrators, lastly? Admins, admin, OK, a lot of admins. Fantastic. Let's see. In that case, well, two more questions. I know it's been a few questions already. Um, first of all, how many of you have heard of the phrase actionable metrics? You've heard of it, OK. And of those who just raised their hands, keep them up, how many of you have actually implemented actionable metrics in a, you know, your current company, past company, and are proud of it? Yeah, a few more drop. Yeah, absolutely. So those of you who have actionable metrics, good job. That's amazing. Um, the word's been floating around for the last you know, five to 10 years. Everyone talks about it, but it's like data science, where you hear about it, seems like everyone else is doing it, but you actually have no idea how to do it yourself. With big air quotes, actionable metrics. <laughs> That's correct. Okay. Yep, and this is one of them. So Looker 4 had, well, just to, I guess, do a little uh, history lesson on Looker. We had uh, Looker 4 come out with some platformy features like uh, creating Slack bot, you know, Looker bot for Slack, or adding data actions. I don't know how many of you have implemented that, but we're making this much easier in Looker 5. And Looker Action Hub, that's really paramount to this, uh, I guess, actionification of your metrics. But a few years ago, and even today, you know, actual metrics, you talk about it with big air quotes, or if somebody brings it up, you're like, oh my god, everyone's talking about actual metrics. It's all marketing, buzzy terms. And why is that the case? Why don't we just have actual metrics? And to start off with, you might have you know, data locked in a database. So not only can you not have actionable operational metrics, you just can't get metrics at all. Or if you have something like Looker, and you have looks and explores, and even automated email reports, if you want to do something you know, between Looker and the data you get, and Salesforce or GitHub or anything else, you have to download the file, pass it over to Ben in marketing or Sally in accounting, and let them take care of everything else. Lots of manual data munging, lots of window for errors, and obviously slow time to action, if not no action at all. Architecturally speaking, do you define that slide a little bit? Hopefully this is what it looks like, starting with all your sources like Salesforce, MailChimp, and Zendesk being flown into some kind of consolidated database probably Redshift or Google BigQuery, maybe Postgres. And you put Looker on top of that. Everything's governed. Everything makes sense. But then, OK, download again. You're divorcing that data from the original data source. And you can't actually take action on the, the real-time data that you're uh, getting into that database. And this is the nirvana state, if you will. So everything's the same until you hit that Looker piece. You have your data. It's in a database, you have Looker. Then wouldn't it be nice if you could just tell Looker to not send you an email report, but send these result sets, maybe customer lists, uh, people who just purchased something in the past week, or people you haven't touched in the past four weeks, and send it directly to AWS, HubSpot, whatever it might be. And not only that, if you're already connecting your ETL pipeline tool with these sources like Marketo, why not dump all the results back into the database and actually take a look at what happened in Looker. And so that's exactly what the Looker Action Hub is, and that's something that we just launched today. I don't know if you were all at the keynote or not, but I think Jamie Davidson, our VP of platform, brought it up very casually. And the tagline is this. It's to analyze and take action on your data automatically and from one place. So it could be creating those customer lists, sending it over directly to segment, 
integrating segment to downstream sources like Marketo and MailChimp so you can trigger email reports to those customers or maybe a reminder note or a discount code. Or instead of getting email reports on system-wide outage, you can actually get a text message through Twilio. And all of this is all native within Looker, so you don't have to create a new server for Looker, Buff, or Slack. You just punch in some credentials and you're on your way. And so that's my quick overview, and I thought instead of me blabbering on about it, I would show you what this would look like. There we go, and let's zoom in a little bit more. There we go. So if you're an admin, you'd be able to go in here. If you're an explorer, you might not be able to, but you know who your admins are now that we've clarified that. So the way to get here is to first of all go into the admin section, right? And then scroll down over here, and there will be a new integrations link. Click on that, and you'll have a host of Looker integrations. And for demo purposes, we only have a handful of them. But what I'd like to show you is an example demonstration of the Segment and Twilio uh, integrations today. And first off, how do you get that set up? Just the integration between those two tools. All you would have to do is to go into the edit section, click on edit. And then let's come back over here. Oh, all right. I'll hop on back there. But we'll need to also come to the segment sources section. So you'll be able to set up a looker source within segment. And the page that you'll be directed to is, is this that you see here. And we won't really focus on anything else but this particular panel on your, uh, let's see, your left-hand side. It's the segment right key. And this allows Looker to connect to that particular segment instance. Here we go. And you'll just want to paste it there, click on Save. That's really all there is to it. And then now you have a connection between Looker and Segment. But then that's just the pipeline. So now how do you actually make anything work? You know, what's an example of what you might do? So let's go off of that customer list example. Let's look for folks who have had a purchase, so at least one order item, in the past seven days. So let's take a look at our user ID and also our user email. Oh, not is, thank you so much, there we go. Greater than zero. And then we'll get a number of results, maybe 200 to 300, 242 rows. So we'll save this just like you would any other look and any other uh, automated email report. Call this customers with recent purchase. <coughs> and this is the fun part. So you'll just go into the uh, save schedule section. There we go, create schedule. And instead of scheduling an email report, you'll be able to click on segment. That's really it. Click on send test. And what that'll do, you know, once it works, is it'll actually send the report, those 242 rows, into segment so that you can pass it on to other marketing endpoints. Now if I refresh segment, let's see, there we go. Now we've got 80 rows, so it's still in transit, but you can see that it's working. So that's a segment example. Now I won't go into the Twilio edit section because it's pretty much the same. You just need to have your account ID. Oops, there we go. Uh, account ID, your verified Twilio phone number, kind of it. But now let's see what else we might be able to create. Or in fact, I'll just use this as an example instead of going back. In other words, changing the destination from segment to Twilio. And here it's asking for my phone number, so I'll type that in. There we go. And to be honest, I'm not sure how long it'll take to send me that report, but I should get this on my, oh, there we go. <laughs> it's a little bit hard to see, so I'm just gonna ask some folks in the front to uh, confirm, but did I get a text message from Looker, or did I get a text message from Looker? <laughs> All right, we did. 
Perfect. So yeah, instead of having to go back to Looker and go out somewhere else, a Salesforce segment, whatever it might be, you, know, you might just be out on a coffee run, you'll get notified on your text message. Now, having said all of that, just to wrap things up quickly here, again, the Looker Action Hub here is, well, has been deployed to, first of all, automate actions from one place, from uh, Looker, instead of having to have that one person in between Looker and other tools. And most importantly, to operationalize data and make that actionable metric term without air quotes, you know, an actual reality. And what's really exciting about this, at least for me, for the Looker team, is that it makes Looker into not just an analytics tool to crunch numbers and analyze some numbers, but also uh, make it into a business platform that helps you operate your business alongside you. So there's much more that you can do uh, with Looker instead of looking at numbers and visualizing things. But having said that, if you want to run uh, your business with Looker, you obviously can't have just three sources. And that's why we have a whole ton of integrations coming out. DigitalOcean, Zapier, that opens a, a whole another dimension to integrations. Uh, maybe uh, Google Cloud Storage and AWS S3. Instead of sending your accounting team email reports, you might want to send uh, an S3 bucket, all these different accounting reports for archival purposes. And these aren't the only integrations that we'll be coming out with in the next few months, but we do need to hear from you. I want to make sure uh, that whatever we're, we're building is actually integral to what you want. So feel free to bug anyone at Looker on what you're using currently, what you'd love to be able to integrate between Looker and those tools, and we'll be uh, cranking away. And that is what I have for my presentation. So I'll just, first of all, thank everyone for being here, full house. But any questions?